today from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It's week 16 of the NFL on EA Sports. It's the Indianapolis Colts taking on the Houston Oilers. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Hoosier State and Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. Today, it's the penultimate week of the regular season, week 16, and we've got a good one in store between the Houston Oilers and the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for our visitors here, they're hitting their stride of late. Winners of three of their last four. season is upon us we've got the gift of the NFL as we're underway here in week 16 and here comes a return from just beyond the goal line and he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee maybe a yard shy of there at the 24 so out comes this offense to take over for the first time and a look at the man under center now in his eighth season in the National Football League. He enjoyed watching that game tape, didn't you? Yeah, Last week's game. He's good. Four I mean, touchdowns, one pick. Now, you were a little upset about the pick. I didn't know if you would play him this week or not <laughs> if you were the head coach. Hey, they got the win. They got the win, so you got to give him another okay, chance? Give him another shot. All right. I think the ratio is pretty good. He'll try to eliminate the interception, but he wants to keep that hot streak going throwing touchdown passes. The numbers for Green a week ago. 15 carries, 67 yards, and a touchdown. Has nine rushing touchdowns on the season, so a lot of credit has to go to the rest of the offense because you know those big guys up front are doing work. But now the goal is to get to 10. And don't for a second think that the defense doesn't know that. They'd like to do their best to keep him out of the end zone in this one. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And that's complete. It's green here. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game. And you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Out of the gun now on third down. Yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Now on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away. This will be fielded at the 17. 35 yards that time on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they'll be let out by their quarterback now in his third season in the league. I tell you what, when he is on schedule for that week, secondaries take notice because you've got to stay alert back there on every snap. A truly powerful arm, one that's capable of challenging any level of the defense on any given play. That's why so many scouts preach arm talent when preparing for the NFL draft. A quarterback with arm strength to make every throw in the book, he's an asset to have in any offense. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 
An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Operating from the gun, Cole finds his man as John Mechie. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll run on first down. Stanford, and they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 20 carries, 111 yards. And the way they ran the ball last week has to bring a smile to the faces of the entire coaching staff because not only are they seeing a back pile up yardage, they're seeing an offensive line in sync. And that bodes well this late in the season. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. <laughs> to throw on second down. Cole got his man complete over the middle. It's Fisher. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Oh, they're going to run a little pop pass here. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. This, the second meeting of these two teams. You might recall they met back in week five. And it was the visitors getting the win there. So they'll be looking for the sweep back here at home. Now a throw here, hauled in. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. They'll look to throw again. And that will be incomplete. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. And now the Colts call on their field goal unit here. From the left hash, this from 46. And his kick is right there. It's good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3 nothing. So pretty good opening drive. That'll make the home fans somewhat happy. They wanted six, but they got three in the early lead. And they should be happy. The guys look good getting down the field. That's got to give them a little bit of hope that good things are in store here today for them. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, this defense for the Colts, they were very strong last week in that win over Cleveland. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively, and it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. the punter as he's on to punt for Houston.
It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. As the Colts offense makes their way out, we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. Takes it to about the 37. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. On second down now, Stanford. And that one goes for about six as he's taken down just shy of the 45. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. Under pressure, and down he goes. Trayvon Walker, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. That's taken on the 25. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Houston's offense taken over again. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Operating from the gun. Ayers. He's got the connection to Moore. Pulling a gain of three on the play. Third and seven now. Back to throw. Ayers. Flushed out right. And he wisely will throw that one away. And they bring their punter out there now as he's on to punt for Houston. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And this will leave them a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They'll keep it on the ground. Stanford, and he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for, one of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles, and they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Cole, he finds his man complete. That's Fisher. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Looking to throw. Cole. And he 
can't escape, and down he goes. Trayvon Walker, now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. That's a ball he needs to let go of there. Wasn't the most time in the world to work through his progression, but NFL quarterbacks, they've got to sense the pressure. They've got that internal clock, and the ball has to be gone. And if you're not going to escape and run for it, you have to let it go before the pressure gets to you and puts you on the ground. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Operating from the gun. Cole. Under pressure, they got him again. Trayvon Walker. What a start to this ball game. Still in the first quarter, and he now has three sacks on pace for double digits. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And down he'll go at the 25. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? The Colts send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. Call it an even 40-yard punt. Seven, though, on the return. And now out comes Houston. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? On second down, it's green. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Heavy set out there on third and one. Back to throw. Ayers being chased out left. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. On first down, Green. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. They'll keep it on the ground. It's green. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Off the play fake. Ayers. Rolling to his left. Here's Johnson with a reception. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And how nice is it for him to know that when he gets outside the pocket, he's got a reliable tight end he can go to. So he's able to look his way, find his big target, and set up first and goal. Looking to throw, Ayers, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The sack sets him back a full 10 yards there on first and goal. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, it still definitely hurts. It's 
second and goal, but now all the way back at the 14. Up the middle they go. It's green. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. So they're coming up here on the ninth play of the drive, and it's third and goal. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. In their locker room, they've got a sign that says defense wins championships. And Charles, they pointed to that this week, said that has to be us looking good early. I like how you saw that because of the bold letters, right? You saw the emphasis that they place on that and what they believe in. And for them, it's every single snap. So it's not just a matter of getting to the quarterback and knocking the ball free. They're trying to read when that ball's going to come free. As soon as those hands separate to throw the ball, they want to be there and have a chance to knock it out. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. That's a nice job there defensively, being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, able to get it across the 20-yard line. That one for Indianapolis resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now they can breathe a little easier, some room to operate as they've got it first and 10 now out past the 20. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Back to throw. Cole. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. Stanford, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield... And he fires one that's intercepted. Sauce Gardner picks it off, and his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Well, if you go by the numbers, you'll find as the temperature goes down, so does the passing efficiency. And now that we're in December, even the routine throws are going to be harder for the quarterbacks. And this one, it winds up getting picked off. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And down by a field goal, they'll take over with excellent field position following the interception. Throwing on first down. Ayers, he finds his man complete. That's done. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. On second down now. It's green. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. And the catch made by Johnson. And he'll be brought down at the 27. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. On first and ten, Ayers. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Second and ten now from the 27. Up the middle they go. Green. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down at the Colts' 18-yard line. 
45 yards rushing for him now to this point. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. For this offense on third down today, they've converted just two for six thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Colts pick it up. The big fella. He's at the 50. And he will take this all the way down to the 38-yard line. So he went out of the pocket left, and then things got dicey. And what often happens is when they get outside, they want to keep their eyes downfield in order to try and complete a pass. But when they try to make a play, they've got to get their footwork involved. And that can really mess them up as well. And in this case, nothing went right, and the ball got knocked free. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Following the fumble recovery, Cole. A quick throw, but incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Looking to throw. Cole. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27. They'll run on first down. Stanford. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Back to throw. Cole. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Operating from the gun, Cole. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. We hear them discuss red zone efficiency a lot, CD, and they almost gave that one up in the red zone. Luckily, they'll have another shot. And you and I both know that every offensive coordinator, play caller in the league, they take particular delight in their red zone calls because those are the payoff ones. But you can't call a play if your team doesn't have the ball. Got to secure it. Very fortunate to get another shot. Here's second and goal. Looking to throw. Cole. He finds his man complete. It's Fisher. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover it? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Back to throw. Cole. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. They'll wind up losing a couple yards here on the play, and it'll be fourth down. I know we saw the pass and the completion, and obviously the resulting loss of yardage. To me, that play broke down with the blocking on it, because if you're going to try and swing it that far outside, that blocking's got to hold up to give your guy a chance. And the defense, they weren't fooled at all. No, not at all, but were they aggressive on that one? So able to add on to their first half lead here, Charles, forcing the miscue with a fumble and then turning that into three points. Yeah, and more than happy to accept any mistakes the other side is willing to make. No problem. You turn it over, we'll take that, and we'll use it to expand our lead. Houston set to take over. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive, a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown, but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. 
And they're able to get this one across the 35. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Again, he'll drop to throw. And it's a short one here. Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. CD, that's the second time this half they put it on the carpet. Now, the first one they lost. Good news here, it doesn't cost them. They do say that things even out in the course of a ball game. So you mentioned they lost the first one. This time, able to retain possession, but they can't get into this habit. The ball can't continue to go on the ground. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? That's three sacks now, and this team came into the game in the bottom five in the league in sacks. Yeah, this What's is going not, on? It's not been their bread and butter. I don't know. Is a blind squirrel finding a nut, <laughs> or is this something they can build on? Well, they found some momentum. They found a crack in that offensive line, and they're putting it to good use. And they'll send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Yeah, we saw that from up here, CD. A tug on the face mask and the flag comes out. And we saw the last week they had some defensive miscues like that. And they told us that they had worked hard on it in practice and thought they had it all cleaned up. But obviously the message hasn't really sunk in. On first down, Cole. Throw left side caught by Goodwin. Touchdown, Indianapolis. A big play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Colts are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Great corner route there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. And he's got it to make it now 13 to nothing. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see. Just one play resulting in the touchdown. The Colts kicking team is out there now, and they will send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They find themselves down 13-0 here as they try to get things started offensively. First and 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down. Now he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Second and 12. Looking to throw. Ayers. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Give him three on the screen. He couldn't break free, and it's third down. 
Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. He finds his man complete. That's Fisher. And a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard stripe. So they bring out their putter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And they will take over first and 10. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. He finds his man complete. It's Fisher. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Looking to throw on second down. Cole, he gets this one to Mechie. Now what a first down pickup of eight. Back to throw again. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. A final shot before break. Cole. And a little floater there is incomplete. So we hit halftime here in Indianapolis with the Colts on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thank you very much. Some critical games going on as teams fight for those final playoff berths. Let's get you around the NFL here in a busy Week 16. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Well, the Colts ready to go to work to start the third quarter. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it and try and win this ball game. So one play and they're already just shy of midfield. Now a handoff up the middle. Stanford, and he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Back to throw. Cole, he finds his man complete. It's Fisher. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Now here's a throw that's complete, and they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. 
More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Looking to throw. Cole looking middle, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. Throwing on first down. Cole. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. He'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. So a great play there for this highly regarded linebacker making his first career sack. And his versatility on display right there. Look, we've known him primarily as a tackler and a cover man, but he can go get the quarterback when the situation calls for it, as he just did right there. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Back to throw. Cole. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Time to give a little credit here. That was an excellent read by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Oh, you're crediting your defense. Got to credit them on that one because they tried to fool them, right? Tried to trick them. Ran a screen, and they went to it and smothered it for a loss of yardage. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. This will be complete to Mechie. And he's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. And now the Colts call on their field goal unit here. From the left hash, this from 37. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. And they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Looking to throw. Ayers. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. On third down, Ayers. He finds his man complete. It's done. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. they go green give him a couple on the carry there second and eight they'll keep it on the ground green and this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35 ladies and gentlemen that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position yes he's as big as they come but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to small up the ball carrier. Dancing to his left. That pass complete to Moore. And they're going to get this up to midfield. 
on any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, it was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Play fake here on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Buying time to his left. And this one is incomplete. It's been a pretty long drive. This will be play number nine, and they need ten yards out of it on third. Operating from the gun. Ayers. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Looks like a nine-yard loss. And it also brings up Ford. Uh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense. And they've done so with ease. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. It'll be a net of 39, 41-yard punt, two on the return. Indianapolis offense ready to go again. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. On second down, Stanford. Oh, look at the juke. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before it's taken down. 52 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. They had a chance to limit his yardage, but he was able to fight off that tackle. So it's not just the responsibility of the guys who missed the tackles along the way. It's all 11 on defense, able to stop this guy, unable to do it on that play. They've got to find a way. How about his ability to break through and gain that yardage? On first and ten, Cole, Mechie has it on the slam. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. And they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. They'll try the left side. Stanford. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw. Cole. He finds his man complete. It's Fisher. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. First down, Cole over the middle complete. That's Fisher. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. On first down, Stanford, and he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, 
and able to really make a big time play for their defense. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Off play action. Cole. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. A great play there. His first touchdown on the year. As his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. No surprise there. Third and goal down here. That's where they're going to look for their tight end. Yeah, you want that big guy running his routes because it doesn't matter who they cover him with. If it's another big guy, he might use his bulk against him. If it's a shorter defender, might go over the top. Either way, he tend to find a little bit of a mismatch in that area. Extra points safely through, and that pushes the lead up to 23. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. The Houston's offense taken over again. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. To throw on second down. Ayers to the right side, and he's got more complete. And that's good for a gain of six. And now that sets up third and two. Looking to throw. Ayers. Again, he finds more. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yes. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Throwing on first down. Ayers. He gets this one to Johnson. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. On first and ten, Ayers flush to his right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. Well, it's obvious, but I can't help but say it here. It's never a good day when the opposing defense has more sacks than you have points. The win seems likely, but this defense is still playing for something here. They see that zero on the scoreboard, and they don't want that to change. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Back to throw. Ayers eluding the pressure right. They'll wind up with positive yardage. It's a gain of three, but now it's third down. Operating from the gun. Ayers looking left side. That's caught by Moore. And he gets this only to the 44-yard line. Not near enough to keep the drive alive. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. They rallied and made the tackle. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is caught. He hits more. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. Let's go. 
So the drive stays alive after the fourth down conversion. First and 10 inside the 30. Looking to throw. Ayers. He'll fight his man, LaVisca Chenault. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Looking to throw on second down. Ayers. And that almost their first INT of the ball game. Had his sights on it, but he couldn't seal the deal. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. That guy can be your safety valve. We saw it right there. Yeah, and it picked up a first down for them, too. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Operating from the gun. Ayers. To the back of the end zone, but too high. Over everybody and incomplete. This one winding toward a conclusion, and how would you assess how the secondary is played? Well, we just saw them take another shot downfield that was incomplete, correct? Correct. So my assessment is that if anyone's played really well in this game, it's been the secondary. That was the latest example. Yeah, they've been solid, really. The whole defense has been solid, still pitching a shutout. Throwing middle, and it's complete. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now. Third and long. Back to throw. Ayers. He finds his man complete. That's done. And he showcases the spin. A pretty good game before he's taken down. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Now a handoff up the middle. Green. And he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. A great effort there with his ninth rushing touchdown on the year. And the Oilers are finally into the end zone here in this fourth quarter. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three down, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Now the Houston offense is going to stay out there as they'll try for two. They'll try and throw for it. And it's incomplete. But a flag is down here, so hang on. Let's see what we've got. Now the Houston offense is going to stay out there as they'll try for two. They'll look to throw. And as he throws, he lost the football. It's loose. And the Colts pick it up. He's at the 50. He's at the 30. Boy, that got pretty close to disaster. Going for two, you cough it up. They almost returned it all the way to the other end for two for themselves. You think electron ball security is in order here? Because Absolutely. It, and it's not just taking care of it. It's what you just talked about. What can result when you don't take care of it? They almost gave up a score. Taking in at the three. 
And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. On second down now, Stanford. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. The 71 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. The offense on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This time they face a third and two. They'll keep it on the ground. Stanford, and he is going to have a Colts first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now three plays, all three short runs, but together a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Up the middle they go. Stanford at a six-yard game gets them right around the 43. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And he'll be tackled at the 45 following a gain of just two. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. On third and two, Cole. And they'll get this down to around the 47 yard line. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 47. Now a handoff up the middle. Stanford. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. So maybe just a momentary setback on what's been a great drive so far. But second and 13 here. Up the middle they go. Stanford. They'll get four on second down, but it leaves them with third and still nine to go. Here's a give up the middle. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. The Colts send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away.
And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked down inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a pro spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Steps away to his left. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Second down and eight. Looking to throw. Ayers. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. Thanks to that last play, a little more room to operate. First and 10 at the 18. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he'll go right back to Moore. Complete again. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Back to throw. Ayers. And this is going to be incomplete. Second and 10 from the 33-yard line. Looking to throw. Ayers. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. We all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but definitely not today. His team trailed by multiple touchdowns and a late sack. Just a parting gift from the defense for him to take back to the locker room with him. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And a throw there gonna be incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. On fourth down, Ayers, and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's our visitors with the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. They'll run on first down. It's green. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. To throw on third down. Ayers. Oh, look at the catch there by Moore. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 26. On first down, Ayers. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. From the gun on third down, Ayers. And he's got it. Touchdown. A 20-yard touchdown. And the Oilers go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points.
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, I guess offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Extra point right down the middle, and the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that drive spans 13 plays, and the result, a Houston touchdown. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camera on this one. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. The Colts set to take over here offensively. Now they are really in the driver's seat here, enjoying this lead late in the fourth quarter. The defense does have all three timeouts, but at this point, doesn't look like it's going to matter much. On first down, Stanford. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Stanford, now a second timeout called for by the defense. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. On third down, Stanford. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. And they'll indeed take a knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And this coaching staff, CD, I think you'd agree, pleased with this overall effort. Oh, I think they're more than pleased, right? They've got to look at each other like, wow, we just pulled this one off in a big way. Great job of motivating. Even better job of game planning. They were facing a top 10 defense, so they had to make sure that everything was buttoned down and they had it ready to go, and their guys executed. Yeah, they were concerned not only about moving the ball through the air, but also on the ground, but both really started to come in sync. So for Indianapolis, the win moves them to 8-7 and seven now on the year. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Baltimore Ravens next week. Meanwhile, for our visitors, it's a tough blow to their playoff aspirations as they drop to 9-6. and six. And they'll get a home date next week against the Minnesota Vikings. I'm Brandon Gordon. Certainly have to thank Charles Davis, my broadcast partner, and our entire crew. We'll catch you next time right here. It's the NFL on EA Sports.